up guys so the other day I asked you guys to give me some topics to talk about in a video and you guys came thick and fast I don't think I've ever seen my DMs fill up so quick you just slid right in there not in a weird way it was open invite basically you guys gave me loads of topics to talk about to do with fitness industry personal life me and Mario anything about anything so I thought I would dedicate that in a video today and tomorrow in London because I have a few meetings and stuff we can all fit it in enjoy the view behind me as well because this wall is so pretty like I just love the colors I think I may just take an Instagram photo that's not a plug for my Instagram maybe it is I'm gonna leave it to you now I have eight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Bruna as well. Thank you. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, and now I have eight. Becoming the best at it, mastering myself, and seeing what I have within me. Getting this pierced made me realise I had two spaces missing. So um, you guys are a really bad influence because I just got these as well. So thank you. I could literally watch that all day. This is why science is a beautiful thing. Beautiful. Did you break it? I don't know. Will you be releasing any more guides? Yes. I've already got two moving car. I'm really coming out with hope. I didn't realise how many people wanted me to come out with some, so I will be coming out with new ones. Yeah. Working with even more experts. I'm really excited about this. Okay, how many siblings do you have? I have one younger brother, single, ladies. <laughs> He's called Luke and it's spelled L-U-C. My name is spelled differently as well to make sure everyone knows that we're from France. Okay, there was another one. If you could be a teacher to all the students in the world for one day, what would you teach them? Such Isn't it? A yeah, I know. I wouldn't really teach them a topic just to be really curious and to never like settle for knowing what you think you already know. If you're really curious and you actually take the time to listen to other people, you can become such a better person. So you teach them to be curious? Yeah, teach them to be curious. Okay, this question is it says tell us a secret. Secret? I don't really have secrets. That's exactly what myself. someone who has secrets says. Okay, let me think. I keep getting distracted looking at the food. What's he good? Okay, tell them about the stuff that comes. Oh man, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> All right, so actually, it was this year. Me and Mario went to Cyprus and we did like cliff jumping. And then um, about like two hours later, then we went to dinner. I wore this like white dress and. What I hadn't realised was that in the process of cliff jumping, I didn't clench my butt enough, so it was, it kind of went up. And then as I was at dinner, the water that had accumulated, it went on my dress. Mario knows, but I didn't tell anyone else, so... Now everyone knows. Now everyone knows. Yeah, I think my mum watches these videos too. <laughs> Even talking about it, like, I'm embarrassed now. How do you handle being popular online? So what do you like and dislike most about it? Um, it's more like love. I love. I, lo I, like, I actually love meetups. I love meeting you guys. I love giving you a hug. I love chatting to you, finding out what you guys do. Because I think we all like gather around fitness at the center, I guess. But then it's just so interesting to speak to you in comments, but then also see you guys in real life. So that's one thing that I really, really love. And also, I guess, being able to create like a positive impact on someone's life, that's something that makes me feel really happy and makes me feel really fulfilled. So that's two things that I really love. I turn around, I turn back, and you're like crying. I have cried a few times in meetups because I get very emotional. But then I think the thing, it's not really like I dislike it. The only thing is that because my channel is a little bit more about fitness, I'll show you guys that stuff. And then some people could just assume that that's all I do um, and that I train like X amount of 
times a week. In reality, I train like three, four times a week. I never track food. I never care about like timings or like cardio before or after or whatever. I never like even categorize training. It's just that that's what my channel is about. It's not that I like dislike it because I don't. I don't really care what other people think. It's just that I don't want people to think like, oh, she trains like this like every single day of the week because that's not true. It's that will be like my one hard training session and I'll put it in a video. But that doesn't mean I train like that every single day. I think that's probably the only thing about it. The rest is good. I feel like I always pick foods that are like not YouTube foods. All the seeds get stuck in my teeth. Still tastes good though. Mm, my gosh. That's the perfect YouTube food. We got it. So funny. I have loads of different laughs Dude. for different occasions. <laughs> and one of them is like, is really slow. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, you do it. <coughs> <laughs> the slowest laugh. That is doing? such an exaggeration. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> It's a tutorial. Make sure the gums are dry. Welcome to today's video. <laughs> I'm beautiful, darling. No. <laughs> This <laughs> being my duck food. I kind of want to try it. I have gone through the ingredients. They're not harmful to humans. It's just all like wheat and soya meal. So <laughs> I actually have trapped us. Oh, I don't have any more. Literally, I know why I'm crying. It's actually tears of joy, but. Oh. There's a couple that I think, I don't know, have had like really good views. <laughs> but there was the question of what's your advice for a long lasting relationship? And then I was like, you guys just have to talk and be really open with each other. And then I looked over and they're like, they're just like hugging like over the moon. And like really excited. So I, yeah, it just, just made me really happy. But yeah, I think that's like one of the things is being really open with each other, like not bottling stuff up. Kind of from the beginning, because the longer it lasts, you just feel like it's building up. So if you guys can be like super honest to each other, it, I guess that's what's worked for me and Mario. Then also spending like quality time together, because just being in the presence of each other, even when you're just on your phone the whole time, it's not the same thing. You know when your heart just like explodes? That's how I just felt. This question's kind of linked. How do you deal with heartbreak? Um, hey Swan, I'm here. Heartbreak's a weird one because you can't put it aside. It is gonna suck and it really hurts. I think it's important to like acknowledge that. Don't switch off that feeling. I was heartbroken once, like a lot. I was so into this guy and thought that he was too and then yeah, it just it just really didn't go well. I was really really sad and I think the thing that helped me get over it was reworking on myself, like doing things that I really enjoyed, um, giving back. At the time I used to work in an elderly people's home and that like kind of, I don't know, just like speaking to them really helped me to get back on my feet. It made me realise that there's, there's bigger things. I took up other things, like I started like triathlon as well and I was getting better at that and I was enjoying it as well. So that was kind of really empowering for me and I was working on myself and I think that's what helped me get over that. Going back to things that I love doing that I'm really good at that I can still get better at and um, give back, I guess. So yeah, that's my answer. This one is about moving. Yeah. So you're French, Mario's Greek. Would you move to France or Greece to live? I love going there, but in terms of places to live, I don't think we'd go to either. Places that we'd love to move to are either Australia or I just 
I loved California. I love how all the big decisions get made, like during these Q and A's. So now we know. <laughs> no, but you think that too, right? Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. Second one is, so yeah. this person wants to work on like pull-ups and body weight moves. Does it help me to lose weight to actually do those moves? I think it depends where you're starting from, but being lean definitely does help because a lot of calisthenics moves are strength to weight ratio. You want as much of your weight working for you, which means that you want as much muscle as possible contributing to your weight rather than fat which doesn't contribute to your strength. And you can do that by making sure that you're doing like your strength training, so one to three reps, and eating enough for that strength training. But then if you need to lose a bit of fat, also adding in some like cardio or just being a little bit more active um, can also really help. Things I'd be ashamed to listen to in my parents. Kendrick Lamar. Chris Brown. Oh, I don't know, let's just have a look at my phone. Mahit Jordan. Drake. Yeah, Future. I, you know what, I you just love, love a bit of Future. Yeah, I just love the sound of his voice. Like, I don't know if it's auto tune or what, but it's, it's, it's working. It's working. It's working with me. <laughs> SZA. Travis Scott. Oh, God, but Cardi B in there. Okay, this question says, how do you get that glow? Uh, just smile. <laughs> Mario! That's so me, isn't it? That's my one right there. It's science, bitch. Okay, so next question. So, for building muscle, you talk about how many reps and sets, but I'm never sure how many total exercises to do in a session. How many would you recommend doing? I think for hypertrophy, like if you're working in the 10 to 15 sets per muscle, then that's like a really good range, definitely what I do for myself. And then if you're doing like compound moves, then that will contribute to like both muscles. So if you're doing squats, that will count towards your total for hamstrings and quads. And you can spread that over however many exercises you like. Okay, so this next one says, yeah. what are your travel plans for the next 12 months? Ooh. I feel like I'm quite organised for the next 12 months. First one on the list is Sri Lanka. I'm super excited about it. It's with New Horizon Escapes. You guys sold it out so quick. I get to meet you guys. We get to basically just have a holiday together. But it's like an active escapes type thing. So we'll go on hikes, we'll do some surfing, we'll do some chilling. I'm teaching some classes as well. The food um, looks insane on The that. food looks yeah. insane. And even the accommodation is like super, super nice. So yeah, I'm really excited about that and then I'm doing three more next year one is in Kenya one's in I think Koh Samui in Thailand and then the other one is in Maldives which will be a banger then we're doing Italy together with Mario's family and we were thinking of doing East Coast of the US together as well as like yeah. a road trip so yeah as much as I can try I love traveling this question is do you ever feel pressure to look a certain way to fit in with the fitness industry? Uh, to be honest, like I don't really feel pressure in the sense where I'm like always stressing about that because I would look like this whether I was in the industry or not just because that's kind of what my lifestyle is like I'm just quite active so nothing is like forced like I'm not like oh I shouldn't eat this because I'm in the fitness industry and I need to look a certain way like no that's not what it's like at all so no but having said that people are very drawn in by first impressions so looking a certain way can, might give people like more credibility oh hey how are you yeah. okay we're back i feel like looking a certain way gives you more credibility because people are like if you look a certain way then you must know what you're talking about that's not always true i've seen loads of top top olympic coaches with so much knowledge that just simply don't look like they swim or they do gymnastics or anything but the knowledge is there and, and so I think sometimes those things don't hold up but especially when you do like social media like people's judgment is very quick so you kind of only have one chance to grab them and appearances is usually the thing they go for in terms of like marketing like 
for thumbnails, for example, if I'm going to do something like, oh, lose fat, like, I will do more of a physique pose. Um, in an ideal world, like, I really wouldn't. I would love to have a picture of me, like, hugging Mario in the thumbnail, but I know that that wouldn't grab people's attention or make it look like I know what I'm talking about. So if I just, like, hit you straight off with science, like, that's not sexy. Like, people can turn off real quick. It's like some of my What I Eat In A Day videos. Like, I'll put my calories in there because I know that's what people want. And then hopefully it will keep them like watching long enough so that they know kind of what I'm more about. But the initial is just kind of like attention grabbing and then the rest of the information is there like if you choose to continue watching. But then in terms of like having bigger boobs or like a bigger butt or things that are more like trendy, that's not really me. Like I'm quite happy looking as I do. I could train my glutes if I wanted to more but it just doesn't excite me. So yeah, I guess that sums it up really. <laughs> You alright? Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Why did you start your YouTube channel? Did you have a job alongside it? Ah, okay. I didn't really enjoy what I was doing. I felt like I had been told to do a PhD program. And I, I love science. It's just that when you do like research, it's just really, really repetitive. And wanted to have like a wider reach to help people that the fact that YouTube was also creative and I've always been creative like when I used to do textiles I love textiles I love film I love music I love all like art media yeah it was kind of like a really cheap option to kind of explore and I was still I did a lot of tutoring at the time I left early for my PhD program so I got an MPhil instead so I wrote up still a different my thesis um, I published a couple of papers then I was still tutoring still doing YouTube I stopped tutoring last year so now on the side have the business that I'm working on with with Mario that we'll tell you more about soon um, and also I consult for different social media brands yeah there you go yeah. Guys, so we're gonna end the video here. I hope that answered some of your questions. I hope this was nice that you got to see a little bit of London and it didn't rain, so that's good. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. I love you and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I'm brushing off my Greek, Mario's brushing off on his French, so we're giving each other sentences to translate. You can just translate for me into Greek. Um, when we get home, I'm excited to change out of my clothes. Okay. Um, in the mall. You don't know one of these words. I'm trying to get around it. So far you said, where is my... And then Papantoni, which is a brand. When you speak like five languages, it's really hard to... Is this one of the languages this that you speak? This is one of them. Okay, this is... So that's how low the bar it, is. It. Let's see. You got it, that's perfect. And what I'm doing is I'm giving you different vocab, yeah? Right, right, right. You're teaching me. Can you say in French, mm -hmm. it's been a little while since I've read my favourite book, Shadow of the Wind? Uh, uh, je ne pas. Yeah. Liberté. Bibliothèque. That is a straight up fail.